e-mobility is getting more and more important and now Audi is presenting the first e-production car, the Audi e-tron. They promise more than 400 kilometers of maximum range and up to 300 kilowatts of maximum power. What that car delivers, how it drives and if we could really reach that distance, let's find out now. During the design process of the e-tron, Audi made the decision to build the car the way that you not obviously say that's an e-car. But of course you will find the typical Audi things on board like the single frame grille. But it looks a bit different because it's in light grey and very important we do have an active air curtain inside here which means it opens and closes depending on how much cooling the system needs and that optimizes the drag coefficient. When you look at the side, we do find full LED headlamps as standard. You can order optionally matrix LED lights if you want. And then when you look at the rest of the car, it looks quite sporty here at the front. And we do find the e-tron sign here at the grille. Aerodynamics is a very important thing talking about the e-tron. This is why we do find these air intakes here at the side, because they assure that the air flow is perfectly inside of the wheel arches and at the side of the car, and that is very good for the drag coefficient. Talking about the side of the car, we have to talk about the wheels. The e-tron comes as standard with 19-inch alloys, but you can also order optionally and at extra cost 20 or 21-inch. And to talk about drag coefficient and aerodynamics, this is the top of the knot because this is a fully digital rear view mirror. The car normally has a drag coefficient of 0.28, but with these optional mirrors mounted, that goes down to 0.27. At the rear of the car, you do find these big spoiler here with the side flaps. Of course, we're talking about aerodynamics, but I think it is quite pretty as well. What I really like are these very thin LED taillights they do feature the typical Audi light signature, but a bit more modern. And very important is this part here, because this is not, as with so many other cars, just a reflector. This is a real LED panel. And then when you look at the whole car from the rear, you find these very nicely shaped shoulders here, and they really make the car stand on the road very solidly. The Audi e-tron is powered by a 95 kilowatt hours battery, which is mounted at the lowest part of the car. And very important, that one weights 700 kilograms. Audi says, if you use the WLTP cyclers, the car should have a range of more than 400 kilometers with that battery fully charged. During our test drive, where we drove mostly on the motorway and we drove about 120 km per hour, 140, up to 160, our average consumption was at 33.9 kilowatt hours per 100 km driven, which gives us a range for more or less about 300 km. Very important is if you really push the car to the limit, you should, I think, have an idea of 200 kilometers you can do with one charge battery. But on the other hand, if you drive the car quite easy, let's say on a motorway 110, 120, or easy through the countryside, I think you really can reach the 400 easily. As with many other, or let's say all electric cars, recuperation is the way to have an, or let's say the way to distance here with the Audi e-tron as well. Which means whenever you lift your foot off the pedal or you start braking, the car is changing from using the engines as a motor into using the engines as a um, generator. So that means the car pushes energy back into the battery. And very important is Audi is offering three different modes of recuperation, which you can choose with paddles here at the steering wheel. One is like nearly no recuperation, which means whenever you lift your foot, it's like you use the clutch in a standard combustion car. Then you have a, let's say, middle way, where you have a quite soft recuperation whenever you lift your foot. And then they offer it the top version or the most heavy version. And this is a bit like when you lift your foot, it's a bit like the car brakes. So that means when you drive, let's say, in the, in the countryside or on a motorway, you don't need to use the braking pedal to just reduce speed. That will work with just one foot. This is why they normally call it one pedal drive. Very important is if you use the brakes or if you just get your foot off the pedal, the car will uh, reduce speed 
up to 0.3 g as a maximum. Whenever you have to reduce the speed more dramatically and you do this while braking, the car will then use the standard brake system. So this is always a bit of a combination. But very important with the Audi is even if you use the most heavy recuperation mode, this is not as hard or let's say as direct as with some other manufacturers. It is a, a lot more soft here. I think I really like it when I drive through the countryside on a motorway, but on the other hand, if you drive through a city and you just want to stop and go and stop and go, it would be a bit more practical to have a bit more, let's say, a more rough system, which really brings the car to a full stop quite quick, just by lifting your foot off the pedal. The Audi comes as standard with an adaptive air suspension, which means, of course, you have different drive modes. And you can not only choose a drive mode where you drive very efficient, you can also use a drive mode where you really can drive extremely sporty. And when you do this and you climb up the hills like we do at the moment, the Audi really uses everything he has on board. And we're talking about up to 300 kilowatts of power. We're talking about more than 660 newton meters of maximum torque. And of course, we're talking about all wheel drive. And so the car really works perfectly. It sits very solidly on the road. And when you want to go out of a curve and you accelerate, the car really uses everything. And then the all wheel drive, of course, really benefits the drive. But on the other hand, I have to say, even though the acceleration is great, the Audi is not as crisp as, for instance, a I-Pace is. So it is really sporty, but it is not that, let's say, that cracker. But on the other hand, I would say the Audi is a car where you say, yes, it's a bit like driving a Land Rover. On the one hand, you can drive very sporty, but on the other hand, you will always have this little bit of extra comfort. And this is something I really do like with the car. High power charging with uh, 150 kilowatt in the Audi uh, e-tron means that we can recharge uh, up to 80 percent uh, status of charge of the battery within less than half an hour. So means uh, the typical stop at a highway with an espresso or just checking your emails will allow you to uh, continue your trip with enough range. What we see is, uh, first of all, Ionity, uh, the joint venture that we did together with the other OEMs. Uh, Ionity has the plan to build up 400 high power charging stations uh, in Europe uh, until the beginning of 2020. And what we know from other uh, charge point operators, they plan at least uh, the same amount. So our prediction is that we see close to 1,000 high power charging stations uh, across Europe in 2020. So the basic system for charging at home we call our charging system compact and uh, this will charge the Audi e-tron with 11 kilowatts means uh, you will recharge uh, empty battery within eight hours so overnight uh, you're guaranteed that the car is, uh, has a full battery in the morning. Uh, the 22 kilowatt option with our charging system connect uh, will allow you close to four hours uh, of charging time and this is uh, also to use the uh, what we call destination chargers so the chargers that you find um, in malls or restaurants where you can charge your car. The Audi e-tron comes as standard with a virtual cockpit which means we have a fully digital screen here and that I can configure the way I want. We know this from other models and that really works very well here with the Audi. On top of this, we do have, like with the new A8 or A6, two monitors, touchscreen monitors here in the center console. Very interesting, they really give you, um, when you touch it, you really get something back, so you get the feedback, and that really makes it easy to use them. And they look great and they're driver-oriented, so that really gives you the opportunity to re easily work with them. Uh, on top of this, you have the gear shift here, gear shift knob here, which looks like you have to move the whole one, but it's only the smart knob in the, the front here. And that really is something that you can touch. It's quite solid and it looks very well and it's very easy to use. The rest of the car really is a typical Audi. So we do find loads of, loads of storage space, like here in the center console. We do have some space here. We do have some space beneath the armrest. Very important, that one here, the front is a bit more modern. So it's open at the side. It looks great, but I think it's not very practical with, because things can fall out. You would, will find quite good storage compartments at the doors, front and rear as well. The rest of the car, I would say it's a typical Audi expect, except one thing, and these are these optional rear view mirror systems. Because you have the camera at the outside and you have a monitor here and there. And it looks very nice, very crisp and sharp, but it doesn't work perfectly for me. Because on one hand, when I look at it and I have sun coming from the front, I can't really see a lot. Because 
the reflection and the angle doesn't work. With the passenger, passenger side, it's a lot better, but on this side, it doesn't work for me. And the other thing is when I drive, I do have my hand here, which means when I look at it, my arm is in the way, so I can't see any. Maybe I get used to drive that way, but if the sun comes, I'm completely done. So this is something I really have to say, sorry, but I do not like it. But the rest of the car is an Audi as you expect it. The e-tron really features a typical Audi interior, which means for me, I do find really, really nice materials, very, very nice craftsmanship. And important is the car, because we do not have a combustion engine, is really quiet inside here. And that, on the other hand, means that the craftsmanship must be on a very high level, because you will hear every single noise. And the only thing you hear inside of that Audi is you and a little bit of the tires and the e-engine, and that's it. It's so nice and so comfortable. Talking about space inside of the e-tron, and I have to say, even for a tall person like me, that car here at the front seats really offers more than sufficient space. And very important, the seats, they are very, very comfortable. I would say if I really drive the car very sporty, I would love to have a bit more of support, but that's only complaining when we talk about really driving quick in very tight turns. Um, but the, the rest of the day, it's really great fun driving that car. And it is a typical Audi, which means you can pull the steering wheel the way you want. And so you will always have a lot of comfort and you will always have the car under perfect control. So overall, this is really more than sufficient and very important. Even on the rear bench, there is enough space so I can sit behind me easily. When you open the hood, it looks a bit like a standard car, but we will not talk about the engine now. We talk about storage compartments because here is the first one. It's only 60 liters, but that one is mainly for all the cables you need to recharge the car. But when we talk about the standard boot, that features 600 liters with the rear seats up and that increases up to 1,720 when you fold down the rear bench. I think this is not benchmark in the segment, but I think it's more than sufficient. And we're still talking about an electric SUV. With a base price of 79,900 euros, the Audi e-tron is on the price level of the Jaguar I-Pace and about 20,000 euros cheaper than the Tesla Model X 75D. The Audi will be delivered with a 95 kWh battery and should offer a range of more than 400 km. The power storage of the Jaguar offers 5 kWh less, however it should go up to 470 km with it. At Tesla, the base version offers a 75 kWh battery and a range of 417 km. Optionally, you can also order a 100 kWh battery, which should guarantee a range of up to 565 km. With 4,90 m, the e-tron is about 22 cm longer than the I-Pace, but still 13 shorter than the Tesla. When it comes to the trunk volume, the up to 2,494 liters cargo space of the Tesla is best. Audi offers a maximum of 1,722 liters and the Jaguar loses the comparison with a maximum of 1,453 liters. That was my first test drive in the new Audi e-tron here in Abu Dhabi. And let's talk about the things I really like with the car. First of all, I really do like the exterior design because that car is not instantly recognized as an e-mobile. So it really works very nicely. It looks like an Audi the way you expect it, a bit more progressive, which I really like. But this is the same with the exterior interior. You really get what you expect from an Audi. From an Audi. High quality, very nice materials and very nice design. When we talk about the drive of the car, it really offers more than enough power and you can drive the car very quiet and comfortably and you can drive it quite sporty if you want. Something I really do like. But then let's talk about the distance you can drive with the car. That car should work with a 95 kilowatt hour battery up to 400 kilometers with one fully charged battery but we drove the car and so if you want to drive the car let's say normally i think you should expect something about 300 kilometers you can do easily if you don't only push it to the limit um, which is i think quite fine but then you have to talk about electromobility which means we have to talk about charging and if you do want to travel with a car long distances you really have to find enough charging stations which in germany at the moment does not work. I think in the future it may get better. It really depends on where you live if you want to have a car like this, even for long distances. And then let's talk about something I really do like on one hand and dislike on the other, which are these new rear view mirrors, this optional feature with the camera system. They do work quite well on the passenger side because the angle is nice, but on the driver's side, 
I drove the car and I had the sun coming up from the front and the angle of that, uh, that uh, screen is not the right way so I didn't see any in it which wasn't nice to drive and the other hand is on the other hand is my elbow is always on the armrest my hand on the steering wheel so that means my ankle here is always in the middle between my eyes and this monitor which is not very comfortable which means for me even if you get used to it it is still not perfectly working so but fortunately it's an option so you don't have to have it but I think it's a quite nice idea just to try something new just to push it and I think maybe in the future we may see better systems but close to this one and then let's talk about the overall car and the price that Audi starts at a price from up to uh, 79,900 euros here in Germany which I think is nothing unusual for a big Audi and I think if you want to have the car fully equipped you better think about something that's say 90 maybe up to 100,000 but then you have everything Audi will offer and I think if you're looking for a car like that the Audi should be one of the options because this really is a high class car with loads of modern uh, technology on board and it drives the way you expect it. Mm -hmm.